We are at the start of uh, uh, Track 30 session for seismic performance of high-rise buildings. And I think this is one of the most challenging and at the same time most interesting aspects of uh, high-rise design. Uh, we have uh, three speakers today, Mr. Tetsuya Tomizawa informed us that uh, he will not take part for presentation of his paper. Uh, so we will have uh, three speakers, and the first speaker is Mr. Alfonso Baroilet. Mr. Baroilet, Vice Project Manager for Titanium La Portada Building. Uh, Mr. Alfonso Broilet is Vice Project Manager for Titanium La Portada Building. Also, during the past five years, he managed the sustainable design issues for the project on the design and construction phase. He is currently working in the developing and design department of ASL Sencorp Chile for projects in Chile and South America. Alfonso graduated on architecture from PUC Chile with architecture studies in Oxford and Tokyo. He is also an MBA graduate from Bobson College in Boston and a lead AP. We welcome Mr. Alfonso for his presentation. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon. So today I'm going to be presenting the case of uh, the building that we designed in Chile and uh, went through a massive earthquake last year. So we're going to tell you the story about uh, how we faced the challenge and how it did uh, uh, perform. So first um, I'm going to start uh, pointing out the earthquake activity in, in planet Earth, uh, especially around the so-called ring of fire that goes uh, all the way up from south to north in Chile. So we are pretty much sitting on, on the ring of fire. That's why we also have so many volcanoes in Chile, in the Andes range. Now, as you can see, these are uh, the 15 strongest earthquake ever recorded on, on planet Earth. And uh, as you can see, we have four of them, uh, three of them, uh, and actually the strongest one ever recorded in the world is a 9.5, which happened in 1960 in the south of Chile. And then among the earthquakes uh, recorded in, in Chilean soil, we have many of them above 8 degrees uh, on, on the Richter scale, which is quite, quite strong. Uh, and 9.5 the top. We can see we can see here, uh, that's, that's from 1960 in Valdivia, in the south of Chile, which killed almost 60,000 people and quite destroyed the south of Chile. And it was felt like a, it, it made a tsunami that went all across the Pacific Ocean to, into Japan. Um, so the challenge that we were facing is that we were uh, asked to design a and develop and build uh, a building which is a 66 stories high office building in, in Santiago City, the capital of Chile. Uh, by then, the tallest building in Chile was uh, about 40, 40 stories high, uh, 144 meters high. So for us, this was uh, quite a challenge um, to do this. So we, we, we started with different kind of shapes in order to try to achieve the, the best one, we made a rectangular base uh, floor plan, then a triangular base, and we end up designing a, a shape like a, a wing shape huh? um, of um, symmetrical in both uh, axes. Um, but the major, the major challenge of this was, uh, was uh, to design the, the structure is safe place. Uh, the key issues for our design was the safety, the safety of the users. 
because of course the safety of the structure had to be under the code, the construction codes of uh, of Chile, which are already quite uh, quite um, quite um, strong. I mean, um, very the requirements are very high. Uh, also, uh, one of the key issues in our design was to the safety of the equipment and the systems of the building itself. That means that after a strong earthquake, we don't want to have uh, a building which is uh, without uh, elevators, without HVAC systems, uh, security or fire extinguishing system. So we need a, a building that it's, uh, it's uh, able to operate safely uh, within the next day or within the next week maximum. And also safety for the operations of the tenants. That means uh, we need buildings that can that can protect the servers of the of the our clients. For instance, in this building we have uh, many banks and technology companies. So they they don't want to have their servers on the floors, or a bank doesn't want to have a server offline for more than a few hours because that would be tragic for their their operations. And well, the design and engineering team was uh, mainly from Chile, architects and design. And we had the collaboration and the consultants of Mr. Joseph Kolakos from CBM Engineers uh, from Houston. And all of the rest, all the rest of the consultants and, and engineers were uh, Chilean based. Um, we designed a building that was able to resist the strongest earthquake according to the codes in Chile. Uh, uh, so we did a reinforced concrete with a massive uh, foundations. This was uh, a three meters uh, high foundations with a lot of steel and a lot of concrete. We had more than 800 uh, trucks pouring concrete for, uh, for almost a week, uh, which for Chile was a, a, a record for us. Huh? Um, a lot of steel, a lot of steel in the, in the foundations. So we designed a building that was able to resist and, and accepted with the, by the codes. Uh, we, on, on the first place, uh, after the computer modeling and lab test, we say, okay, we're good with the resistance, but how can we go beyond that? How can we achieve uh, an excellent performance for the operations of, of the building, for the system itself, uh, not only for the structure, but something safer? So our strategy was uh, something similar that, uh, that had the, the cars, like the shocks of the cars that they are able to resist impact, strong impacts, uh, without sacrificing the structure and, uh, and the safety of the car. And, and even though if you, if you fall in a very deep hole, uh, you can still, if you, damage, if you damage the shocks, you can still replace them. Uh, so it works the same as an electric circuit, that if you have a strong heat on a, of power, you can still replace the fuse and put a new fuse without, uh, damaging the rest of the electrical system. So we wanted to design something that could be replaced and could, could save the, the structure of the building itself. So we did some um, analysis uh, with the engineers and we came out that, uh, that the, first, the best solution for our, for our challenge was to use uh, the U-shaped flexural plates. U-shaped flexural plates. These are plates made out of uh, um, a special alloy uh, of steel and other metals which are more soft and could bend uh, on strong uh, seismic requirements. Uh, um, so we submitted this into uh, real scale lab, real scale models in the lab and, uh, and then we came with the, the, that the strongest requirement of the, the U-shape would be in these points which are like after the welding after they place the, the plate is welded to the, to the rest of the steel. Those are the, the, the stronger requirements on the, on the flex rod plates. Well, we did more tests uh, in order to take the pieces to the break point and analyze what was the maximum strength that they could allow or what was the needed thickness or the appropriate uh, flexion or flexibility of the piece itself. That was the, the breaking point, which is actually the same point that we saw in the software modeling. Um, also, after the, the, the computer lab, I mean the computer software and the lab test, the results were quite good because they told us that uh, the drift 
reduction, percentual reduction, was actually up to 45% uh, around the 45th floor, uh, which is a lot of reduction, 45%. So that will give us a much less vibration and mass, uh, a less deformation on the top, and less drift, of course, and less displacement of the tower itself. Uh, we did some computer modeling of, uh, of the proper quantity of uh, pieces um, for each uh, uh, energy dissipate, dissipation device. Huh? So this was the, the final design that we had for, 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 for each one of the pieces. Um, and then the location of that was very important since uh, we have uh, non-symmetrical on both axes uh, uh, floor plan, we need to locate uh, the dissipation devices in, in, in both directions. So we have uh, on the edges of the building, which will, um, which will uh, get most of the, 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 the strength because of the shape. And we also had uh, dissipation devices in the, in the core of the building behind the elevator shafts. Mm -hmm. So this one that you see in this model, this will be for the units on the, on the edges. Also, uh, these units will be located every three floors, not on each floor, every three floors, and will be located uh, on diagonals, making a, a cross, like an X, uh, and th they will be receiving the force through the diagonals, not through the slabs or through the pillars, uh, only through the diagonals. So this was uh, how it will be located. Well, this, you can see that uh, there is a a, a perforation, a, a hole in the, in the slab that will allow to, uh, a free movement of the diagonals and all the energy will be collected in the, in the energy dissipation device. So as you can see, it's a very simple device. It's not very sophisticated. It's just well designed with the proper shape um, and, and it's not an expensive device actually. It's not, it's not very high tech. So that, that will be the, the forces and the, the, the strength going through the diagonals. So we run some tests with ETAPs to see what will be the, the, the strengths on the building for five different vibration modes. So we were doing quite well on the at least in the software. So the construction began. We did uh, most of the construction of the energy dissipation device off-site, so they are prefabricated. Then they are brought to the, to the construction site and ensembled, ensembled on-site, and then bring it up as a, as a V-shape, and then, uh, of course, uh, welded the, the other two pieces of the diagonals like on the on not only on site but on the on the building already after being located, then you have the other two legs welded on site for for the, for the final complete piece. You can see here the locations of the energy dissipation devices. We don't we didn't have them in in all the building because it was not needed in the lower floors, but it was needed more in the middle and in the top floors. So this is the, the energy dissipation system almost finished. This is still under construction, doing the final finishing, painting. And we can see here, uh, this is a, a board meeting room on the 50th floor. And they, they have the energy dissipation device on the floor, on the room, and they are quite proud of it. So every time they had a meeting, they, they were starting the meeting talking about the, the system that it's included in the building. So they can show off a little bit and, and and, and enjoy the, the design of it and have a story to tell before any meeting. So we finished the building in January 2010. We were very happy. We, we, we were already preparing for the opening of the building for March. We had a book. Uh, the president was going to come to the opening. The final cost of the building was $140 million. And the energy dissipation device only cost $900,000, which is less than, uh, it's about 7%. Excuse me. So 
So everything was fine until February 27, 2010, 3.30 in the morning, in the middle of the night, and we had a very strong earthquake, which was 8.8, .8, only 330 kilometers away from Santiago. Uh, it's a very strong one. It, it's acquainted for 100,000 Hiroshima nuclear bombs, and the energy, energy compared with the, the earthquake in 80, in January 2010, this was 31 times stronger, and it was uh, 178 times more energy in, uh, than, than the earthquake in 80. It lasted for 2 minutes and 45 seconds, and it killed 525 people mostly because of the tsunami, more than, than the earthquake itself, it was because of the tsunami, people in the cities, in the coast. So we had a lot of damage uh, in the highways, some buildings. This is a building that collapsed, which was in a city very near the, the epicenter in the, in the south of Chile. Um, the whole building went down, highways, um, parking spaces, This building is under demolition right now because of structural damage. Even, uh, even you can see here, this is a chart showing the date. So within a month, we have so many uh, replicas above six degrees, some of them 6.9, 6.7, 6.9. The very same date of the earthquake, we have uh, seven little earthquakes stronger than six degrees in the Richter scale, which is quite strong already. Well, and however, despite the, the strong earthquake that we have, most of the construction in, in Chile and in Santiago, they resisted quite well. Uh, we didn't have uh, major damage, most of the building resisted. However, many of them have internal damage, like uh, the falling ceiling, falling uh, system of, uh, of uh, all computers on the floor, elevators not working. And here's a video that shows uh, our building. So this one, will, it's with the energy dissipation device, and the one on the right will be without. This was made by our consultant in Chile, the ones that designed the system. And you can see the difference of the movements and, and the shaking and the displacement of the, the two cases. This is with, sorry. Sorry, here goes again. This one is without the system. And you can see the displacement is quite stronger. And now this is just a simulation of the system working and how it uh, moves in, uh, in two directions. So after the earthquake, um, of course, we, we, we had our engineers to check on every one of the devices and on the whole structure of the building itself. And we could see that the, the flexural plates resisted quite well. Actually, we didn't need it to change any one of them. We, we were supposed to, to, to change these fuses after a strong earthquake, but they resist, they, they bend it, they, they had their flexibility, so finally none of them resulted in a need of change. But as you can see here, uh, this is the welding zone on red, and this is the axis of the welding zone. And you can see how the paint, the paint on the device uh, got, uh, got off the steel because of the, the, the it, it did crack uh, because of the movement. Uh, in, in some of the floors, it burned, the paint itself burned because of the heat dissipated through the through the metal so it kind of showed us that uh, that that uh, all the software tests and the lab tests were were very well because uh, 
it did told us that this was going to be the part with the strongest uh, um, strongest uh, requirements of uh, on after the earthquake. And this is the building for the opening date. We had to postpone it, of course, and we did it in May. We had the precedent for the opening, and, and we became a symbol of uh, the earthquake resistance in the country because uh, as an example of, of how to, to design and how to, um, how to um, face a challenge for, for, for taller buildings in Chile, and it kind of showed us uh, that it is possible to make taller buildings in Chile if you have a proper design and if you have the proper engineering. Um, the business itself was a great success. We, we, we leased the 100% the of the building in less than, than one year. Actually, after the earthquake, it kind of boosted our leases. Um, and we leased the whole building uh, average 18% higher uh, on a higher rate, rate for lease than the market rates for the area, which is the, this is the business district in Chile, and, and, and our price was 18% higher. And, and so it kind of showed that the, that the, that the system did work. The, the, we, the, payback, the payback of this was, since it was very cheap, less than $1 million, the payback was less than one year, and, and it's difficult to measure, but, but it, it comes back very quick. So that's it, and thank you very much if you have any questions.